Little Bits Honey Bees YouTube channel. I'm a skinny bee man. This is the next video in the series of getting ready for winter. Getting my bees ready for winter. There's really three things that kill bees in the winter. The number one on top of the list is varroa mites. If you haven't controlled the varroa mites all summer, it's the number one killer. They, they continuously, from the beginning of spring, the mite population keeps continuing to grow. It usually peaks out in late July and in August. And this, is, this is August 20th today. I treat mine all, all year long. I don't, I don't ever let the mites build up because due to the viruses they carry. Uh, there's several ways to treat for varroa mites. We're going to go through a few of them today, and I've got videos on the channel in more specifics on how to do certain treatments. Uh, it's a big controversial thing to treat or not to treat. Uh, it's not a question if you got mites. If you live in the United States and you got bees, you got mites. Are they at a threshold that the bees can handle? Maybe. And they may not be. There's several ways from basically no treating all the way up, organic, all the way up. I'm going to try to run through a few of them uh, to give you some options. You can dig into them in a little detail and see how you want to treat. But you you got to manage varroa mites. You can't raise bees and not manage the mites. You know, you'll have people out there say, well, I haven't treated for five years for varroa mites. That's true. Uh, there's ways of doing that, and the bees do it naturally on their own. They do a brood break, they swarm out. People don't treat, they don't, they don't watch their hives, they swarm out, it's a natural brood break. And what a brood break does is when they, when they swarm out, there's no queen in there laying. So all the brood hatches out before they can make a new queen. And all these varroa mites that was in the brood is on these bees. In the first 800 to 1,000 eggs that new queen lays, these varroa mites all run down in there. Instead of getting one or two to a cell, there'll be 10 or 15 to each cell, each larva. And what they'll do, they'll suck it dry. And the, the larva dies and they die. So it's a natural thing, a brood break works well. I mean, it, that's the most natural way to treat for mice. Just this camera a little bit. Like I was saying, the natural, uh, when a bee swarms, that is a natural brood break. This late in the year, unless you live in the extreme south, I don't recommend doing this technique because it, it puts the bees way behind on making their uh, winter bees. But if this hive was full, we wanted to break the bream. We'd come in here, we'd locate the queen, catch her, put her in, uh, in a cage just temporarily, go through this hive and pick out a frame of honey and a frame of, of pollen. No, no brood, no open brood, none of it. We take them two frames we got here and we're going to put them we we'll take them and put them in another box turn our queen queen loose in there there's no brood in here so by the time she gets brood laid up and hatched all the mites that's on these bees right here will run in there and do the same thing she ain't got that many eggs laid so they'll all run in there and they'll kill the first eight eight hundred to thousand eggs takes care of the brood break on this. This hive here, we're letting them make them a new queen. So by the time they get them a new queen made, basically all this brood is hatched out and all these varroa mites waiting, just dying to reproduce, they all run into cells and kill the, so many of them go into cell, they kill the larva and their cells, stops the cycle. That's how brood break works. That's the most organic that there are. I guess the second most organic would be, this is a flat sieve. It would be better if you had a, a, a round uh, cone-shaped sieve. But you just take and uh, uh, 
half a cup of powdered sugar. And to do this and make it effective, you got to have screen bottom boards, which I don't run, so I don't use this method, so that the mites will fall through and get on the ground. And you really, to do this and be efficient with it, you've got to do it no more, no less than once to every two weeks all summer long to control your mites. So it will knock the mites off. It doesn't kill them. It knocks them off and they'll fall through the screen bottom board and get on the ground. You take a half a cup of powdered sugar and put on this sieve and just, just dust it over the top of all your frames. If you got a, if you got if you use a double stack box, you would go on the top box and do it. Go it down through there. They clean themselves, the mites drop on the ground. Most second most organic way to do it. Uh, and I don't know all the treatments. I'm just going through some of the most popular. Uh, next, if you want to still stay fairly organic, and this one, this one here is fairly effective. It kills about 50% of the mites that's outside the brood. And you basically got to do it every two weeks all summer long. It's a fogger. I don't sell foggers or recommend, but some of the other foggers that's got the tanks on top doesn't hold up as well. This is a Burgess. You can get them at Walmart and various places. But you can take, it's got, comes with a yellow container. You'll mix, uh, 16 ounces of mineral oil, which is a laxative. You can go to the drugstore, Walmart, anywhere and buy it. You put it in the container. Take 30 drops of food grade wintergreen oil. Mix it in there. And you just come up there. Put this hydrus together. You light this up, it gets real hot. You wait till it gets cherry red. You squirt it a couple times, make sure it's not squirting any hot oil out. It'll just be a white plume of smoke. Hold it about six to eight inches away. I crack the lid, give them a couple pumps till it comes out the top of the box. You need to do that oh, every two weeks. And it, it's about a 50% mite kill. What it does, the oil gets on, on the mites and it, it smothers them and they don't like the winter green. Uh, the commercial guys, a lot of them use oxalic acid in a dribble method. I don't even know the formulation on it, but they'll, they'll, they'll mix oxalic acid with sugar water. They come in there and put so many milliliters on top of the bars. You gotta have your honey off on this. It's real effective. Uh, couple drawbacks to it. It will kill open brood. It can kill the queen. And it contaminates honey. I, I don't particularly like the dribble method at all. The backyard guy, a vaporizer for oxalic acid is probably the way to go. It's a hundred percent mite kill. You do it in the spring. I treat once a month, once a month with oxalic acid in a different way, but the, I do the vaporizer once a month. You put uh, two grams of oxalic acid in this little pan. And it's got, of course, this one's not built yet. It's got a heating element in it and a wire. You come in there and run this halfway back in your box. Put a towel on it. Of course, this the box would be shut up like this. I crack the feeder just a little bit so it all draws to the top. You have to follow directions on how long your vaporizer takes to vaporize the two grams. But you hook it to a deep cycle or a 12 volt battery. It runs through its cycle and fogs. Very efficient. Should never have to worry about mites. You treat once a month with this right here. Should have no problem with mites. This is the way I've done it in the past. So I've got so many hives, this takes too long. It roughly takes seven to 10 minutes per hive. And when you get up in the hundreds, it takes too long to do. Uh, the preferred method that I have used this year for me personally treating mites is the fogger. 
I use a half, uh, half pint jar, just a mason jar. I started out in the spring using 190 proof Everclear. Works excellent with 30 grams of oxalic acid. But uh, the problem I come across was that was the alcohol was eating the plastic plunger in here. And you can buy replacement parts. I think it costs five dollars for the whole kit. But it works fine. If you use the alcohol, it, it's a must that this thing be all the way hot. No, when you pump it, there should be no liquid come out. If you pump liquid alcohol out in this hive, you'll catch it on fire. So it's just got to be a vapor when it comes out. No, no, because it burns out. I've tried it with the vapor with a torch lit out there. It will not ignite. But if you get liquid coming out of it, it will ignite. I have changed. Instead of using alcohol now, I use 100 milliliters of distilled water with the same 30 grams of oxalic acid and I just take the jar and like that when I mix it up put it in the microwave for about a minute put the lid on it, shake it up it'll get crystal clear the only thing about the distilled water is if it cools off it will go out of, 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 of it'll settle out I was trying to think of the word, but can't think of it right now. It comes out of solution and, and settles back out. So I typically let it cool down a little bit and use it use it hot. And same way you light the fogger, I come up here, crack the lid, give it some pumps until it comes out the top. Very effective. I had real low mic counts all year on all my highs. When you vaporize oxalic acid or fog oxalic acid, you need to have a respirator on this stuff's not good for your lungs at all. It, it's a little dangerous, but it, it is approved for uh, vaporizing and very, very effective. Next year, I think that I will probably go with the glycerin, food grade glycerin mix and oxalic acid on shop towels and you soak them. Randy Oliver is the big instigator on this, scientific beekeeper. He's got right now trials this summer for the EPA and the, and the FDA trying to get it fast track approved to go to use in the United States. Uh, his data should be out this winter sometime so I'm kind of holding back waiting on the data. But I've talked to a couple big breeders queen breeders that's already going to the, the shop towel this year so I assume that they've already talked to Randy Oliver personally and the findings is very very good it's a three month treatment you put them on there for leave them for three months the bees chew it up move it around the hive it gets gone three months you do it again so it's a continuous treatment for the mites uh, like I say these big queen breeders they've got a lot to lose a lot of hives so I assume that they've already seen the data. Uh, but the three things that kill bees in the, in the winter, number one is the roller mite we talked about. Number two is moisture. That's why you see all my... Hi, this is a feeder. It's got a vent hole here, a vent hole. And this one ain't been done yet. It usually has three got a vent hole in the bottom of course the ladder assembly lets it vent too up the top every high body including honey supers has got two vent holes in it because actually cold doesn't kill bees wet cold bees they die they can't handle the moisture in the cold they can handle extremely cold temperatures and not kill them. Uh, people think that they got to have, you know, five or six boxes stacked up, strong hives to make it through the winter. It's not the amount of bees, it's the health of the bees and how they've been managed and what you put the boxes are in. About three years ago, I had a, a uh, split 
they had trouble requeening for whatever reason late in the fall. It was a late split. It was in first October. And when they finally got queen right, they had a cluster the size of a handball. And they didn't have any stores. I went and got a, a frame of drawed comb, went in the house, and poured honey all over it and let it drip off. So they had one side, one frame, one side of one frame with honey. I put them in a box. Actually, it was in this row, it was up there on the end. Uh, and I wrote them off. I said, they'll never make. There's no way this cluster of bees the size of a handball can make. Well, I put, we'll go through some other steps I do in the winter. But anyway, when I opened that hive up in late February, that colony had, had survived, and now the cluster was the size of a softball. She had made brood all winter. When you got a great big massive hive with tons of bees in it, it takes a lot of honey, it takes a lot of resources to heat this, and there's so many bees in there, they keep this so hot that they never go into a semi-hibernation. They consume two or three times more food than they would if they was in hibernation stage. So I hope this helps. You gotta control the mites one way or another. You can't raise bees and, and, and not control the mites in the United States. If you like the videos, subscribe to the channel and make comments. I'm sure this will raise some controversy. But as a commercial beekeeper, I have to treat one way or the other. And as a backyard beekeeper, you're gonna to have to treat or you're not gonna have, you're gonna be buying bees every year and it's not a good thing. And you can make get your bees through the winter. Have a good day.